We're on the uh, last leg of the 2022 Biostock Life Science Summit, and I'm joined now by Jonathan Gertler, the CEO of Back Bay Life Science Advisors. Uh, thank you so much, Jonathan, for joining us today. It's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, what brings you here to the Biostock Life Science Summit, first of all? Well, you know, I have a very strong ties to the uh, Nordics, and I'm here often. This is actually my fifth trip to the Nordics in 11 weeks for a whole host of reasons. Jonas, your CEO, and I have met a number of times. He was kind enough to invite me to give a keynote address here, and I was eager to do it because I thought the interesting mix of companies and the presence of investors would make for a very fascinating time, and it has been. Uh, well, that's, it's, it's so good to have you here. Uh, what have you thought of the uh, event so far? The event's been great. I think seeing the range of companies, you've got a nice mix of early stage companies still in the throes of private evolution. You've got public companies on a smaller exchange, larger public companies, a mix of technologies, both med tech, health tech, and biotech. It's been a, a wonderful exposure to the very robust ecosystem you guys have here. And, uh, well, you, you gave a, a wonderful presentation earlier, um, and you talked about the pearls of wisdom. Could you go a little bit into that right now? Oh, the pearls of wisdom are um, probably not so pearly and perhaps not so wise, but they're mantras that I, I tend to live with. They're things that I think are important for companies to consider, and certainly things that have guided me as I've started companies and grown companies and advised and invested in companies. It's really, I would distill it to one or two thoughts, one of which is always be prepared, do your homework well in excess of what you think you're gonna need to actually present so that you're really in control of the facts, the nuances of what you're doing, the future, and that pearl of wisdom, I always say, control the debate, but it really just means being fully prepared. And the other thing that I emphasize over and over again is to really have a plan. All businesses change over time. We can never fully predict but if at least you have a, a clear map to where you're going and you understand where the road might deviate, you can respond accordingly and succeed in the long run. Well, uh, those are very good uh, pearls of wisdom, I would say. Um, I also wanted to ask you, is there anything that U.S. biotech and medtech can learn from the Nordic uh, sector here? Absolutely there is. I think fundamentally, you know, your healthcare delivery system is so very different. It may be one, however, that the U.S. ultimately at least adopts certain aspects of. I think the databases are very strong. I think the way care is delivered with healthcare equity is very strong. Those are very important facts of the Nordic system. And that translates then into clinical development and clinical utilization. The capital efficiency that is forced upon Nordic companies by virtue of the thinner capital environment that is here, but is also embraced by Nordic companies because truthfully it's an incredibly good habit, is one that I think American companies can look, look to and learn from. We have a lot of capital floating around in the United States, and sometimes that leads us to be less disciplined in our prioritization and our spend. And I think if you can combine the capital resources of the United States and its heterogeneity with the um, more focused delivery systems and the capital efficiency of the Nordics, you'd have an outstanding combination. Well, thank you so much uh, for being here, for answering these questions, and uh, it's been great uh, having your presentation today, and uh, we, we hope to see you again soon. You absolutely will, and it's always a privilege to be here. Thanks so much for having me.